Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today we're checking out this video card. It is the ATI FireGL X3256 and we will be testing it under Windows XP, Windows 98 and MS-DOS. So here we have the graphics card. It's single slot, has an AGP8X interface. We have two DVI ports. Both of them support VGA output and I believe this is a port for S-Video or Composite Out. And it needs power. Uh, Molex power connector goes here at the back. In terms of specifications, this is the equivalent to the ATI Radeon X800 Pro. It has 12 pixel pipelines. The GPU runs at 493 MHz. We have 256 gigabytes of GDDR3 running at 452 MHz connected with a 256-bit memory interface. These are all the parts used in this video, so let's take a closer look. I wanted to make sure that we're not being bottlenecked by the processor. We tested this video card recently with an AMD Sempron 3100 Plus and the performance was a little bit on the low side, so we're using something a lot faster. This is a really cool mainboard from ASRock. We have tested this on the channel, I put a card on the screen. It is for LGA775, but supports AGP and has SATA ports. So it's a really nice mainboard that bridges old and new. And we're using a Intel Pentium dual core. It's the E5800 running at 3.2 gigahertz. So this is a really fast platform compatible with both Windows XP as well as Windows 98. For cooling, we're using the Arctic Alpine 11. It's the revision two. And as always, I like to use thermal pads instead of paste. I wanted to use the thermal Grizzly 32 by 32 millimeter pads, but they are a little bit too big for LGA 775. So I switched to the good old IC graphite thermal pad with 30 by 30 millimeters. It's just a little bit smaller and fits perfectly. For memory and storage, we have to reconfigure the machine. I know there are patches for Windows 98 to support bigger storage devices and more RAM, but I like to keep everything vanilla. So for Windows XP, we're using a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte SATA SSD, as well as two gigabytes of DDR400 RAM in dual channel configuration. And for Windows 98, a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SATA SSD, as well as a single 512 megabyte memory module. For sound, we can't go wrong with the Sound Blaster Live. Even under Windows XP, you can enable EAX in many games. And also under Windows 98, be aware if you're comparing the benchmark results that you see in this video, you will get higher FPS if you don't benchmark with a sound card, um, quite significantly actually, so keep that in mind. Win setup from USB unfortunately didn't work on this computer. We're getting a blue screen. So once again, I'm using a SATA optical drive and installing Windows XP from CD-ROM. And for power, we have an Asus Tough Gaming 750 watt power supply. We are installing Windows XP followed by the Snappy Driver Installer Origin project, which auto detects all the devices, but I make sure to unselect the video drivers. I wanna load them manually and here we go. These are the latest FireGL XP drivers directly from the AMD website. And here we have the results. This is Far Cry with maximum details and look at that, over 100 FPS at 640 by 480. And we can see up to 10, 24 by 768. We are limited by the processor, but then 1280 by 1024 and 1600 by 1200, the video card starts to run out of steam. But even at 1600 by 1200, we're still getting around 70 FPS. Remember when I mentioned CPU bottleneck? I pulled up the results when we tested the Sempron 3100 Plus and I put them side by side and wow, that video card was really held back by the Sempron. So it just shows, even for Windows XP retro gaming, you need a fairly decent processor. When running Doom 3, unfortunately, we're getting an error. And yeah, that is a big deal. In today's world, OpenGL may be not that relevant anymore, but back in those days, many games supported OpenGL. So I definitely want to fix this. So what I'm doing is I'm installing the latest ATI Catalyst drivers. Now the installation will fail, but it will unpack all the drivers to the hard drive. 
And then we can go into the device manager and manually force the drivers. I'm using the X800 Pro slash GTO, I believe. And yeah, that's working fine. And then I'm also installing the Catalyst Control Center manually and after reboot, yep, everything seems to be working just fine. Here we have Doom 3 running in high quality. You wanna select high quality if your video card has 256 megs of RAM. The ultra quality setting uses uncompressed textures. You wanna have a 512 megabyte card. And here we, are, here we have the results, 640 by 480, 130 FPS almost, that's amazing. But we can also see that as soon as the resolution increases, we're losing performance and 1600 by 1200 is not that playable on this video card anymore. But if you're using a 17 or 19 inch 1280 by 1024 monitor, then Doom 3 will play really well. Here we have a quick comparison with the Fire GL driver that I used before and now Catalyst 10.2. So I'm running the Far Cry benchmark again and yeah, everything checks out. We're getting identical performance, small uh, variation, but that's within, uh, what's the word, within uh, margin of error. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. This time I've disabled HDR and I actually I will put the detail settings on the screen. This is the modern Steam version, by the way. And yeah, decent performance. Half-Life 2 was a game that ran really well on Radeon cards and up to 12, 1280 by 1024, we're getting 80 FPS, which is really good, but 1600 by 1200 is a little bit too much for this video card. In fear with maximum details, but without anti-aliasing and without the soft shadows, also decent performance, but this game is more demanding up to 1024 by 768. It is playable, but beyond that, you are gonna suffer with the performance. I also ran 3 d Mark 2001 SE. We're getting 26,763. And now on to Windows 98. I had to make some changes to the hardware. 512 megabytes of RAM, as well as a smaller 32 gigabyte SATA SSD. And then we're installing Windows 98, followed by the chipset drivers, which you can get from the ASRock website for this mainboard. Then we're installing the USB 2 drivers. And this time there are no Fire GL drivers for this operating system. So I'm using the uh, latest Catalyst drivers and we're forcing them through Device Manager once again. I'm selecting the X800 Pro. You have to do this twice. Uh, there are two entries in Device Manager and then also manually installing the Catalyst Control Center. And there you go, we have a nice image on the screen. Finally, I'm installing the uh, Live, Sound Blaster Live drivers and also DirectX. Eight. The processor turned out to be too fast for incoming. We're getting negative results, so no point in testing more. And also in expendable, the game wouldn't run. I believe this is also an issue with the processor being too fast because both of these games ran fine on the Sempron 3100+. Plus. However, Drake can work just fine. Here we can see across all the resolutions, we're getting over 300 FPS. That is beautiful. You can go into the driver settings, enable an isotropic filtering, 4X or 8X anti-aliasing, and you will still get a silky smooth experience. OpenGL is working fine under Windows 98, and look at that, 1204 FPS. That benchmark finishes in under a second. You, you don't even see anything on the screen. It's That's how quickly things happen. And yeah, the performance goes down, but even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 400 FPS. Absolutely amazing performance. In Quake 2, same thing, 800 FPS at 640 by 480, and goes down to around 600 FPS at 1600 by 1200. And Quake 3 is also running beautifully. Even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting over 300 FPS. I tested 3D Mark 99 Max, we're getting 35, 1007 3D marks as well as 79,344 CPU marks. And I also tested uh, 3D Mark 2000, 36,438 3D marks. I will test NGLIDE in a second, but let's have a look at DOS performance. At 320 by 200 performance is amazing. For example, in the PC player benchmark, we're getting 955.6 FPS and in Quake, 678.1. 
Performance at 640 by 480 was a little bit disappointing. For example, in Quake, we're only getting 29.8 FPS and in the PC Player Benchmark, we're getting 66 FPS. So I loaded the VGA Boost, which can boost performance with AGP video cards and Quake now runs at 59.9. So it's getting up there. But in my opinion, this is, this is still uh, a little bit disappointing. The video card should be able to do a lot better. And now I wanna check out if we can get Nglide to work. So Nglide is a wrapper that translates between the Glide API and DirectX or Direct3D. We need to upgrade DirectX to version nine and then I'm installing the latest version of Nglide and you can install it and then also copy the Voodoo DLL files into the game folders. Unfortunately, not having much luck, I'm getting some uh, crashes and, and, and some error messages when trying to launch the games as well as games locking up with the sound looping. So I switched the machine back to Windows XP by upgrading the RAM and swapping out the SSD to see if Anglide works better and yes it does. Here we have Unreal Gold running perfectly fine. We're testing at 1024 by 768. Unreal Tournament, also without any dramas. This is Rune Gold, a really cool game. Uh, I wish I had the time to play a little bit more. Excellent game. This is actually the GOG version. And if you go to the extra extras download section, you can download the original version, which, which runs on a retro PC. Glyph Barkers Undying also supports the Glide API and runs perfectly fine. And here we have 4x4 Rally which only goes up to 800 by 600, but supports Glide and also looks really beautiful. Seeing how beautiful Nglide works on this video card, I really wanted to make it happen under Windows 98. So I thought, what about not using the latest version? Maybe there's an incompatibility going on. Here we have version 1.0 and look at that. Yeah, the games are working. Unreal Gold uh, working just fine under Windows 98. Here we have Unreal Tournament again. Rune is working fine and also Glyph Barker's Undying is working. 4x4 Rally is not working, but it's also not working with the OpenGL or the Dark 3D render. So maybe it's just not compatible on Windows 98 or on this machine. I'm not quite sure. And then I noticed something. Here we have a, uh, a little capture of Glyph Barker's Undying under Windows 98. And I'm getting the impression that Anglide runs smoother with less stutters under Windows XP. And I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe because under Windows XP, a second core is supported and can do more processing in the background. But yeah, those stutters I saw under Windows 98, I didn't get under Windows XP. And I just had the feeling that Nglide runs a little bit, little bit better under Windows XP. Not a bad graphics card, but does it run Crisis? Despite being unsupported, yes, the card runs Crisis. And of course, I forgot to install Fraps to show the actual FPS, but you can get the idea. It seems to be pretty smooth running at 1024 by 768 with low details. And yeah, then I tried pushing our luck. We are playing now with medium details at 1024 by 768. It's not as smooth, maybe around 30 FPS. You can see a little bit of stuttering going on, but it's definitely playable. So yes, the ATI Fire GL X3256 can run Crisis. So guys, the ATI Fire GL X3256 turned out to be really retro friendly. We can use the drivers for the Radeon X800 Pro and we saw excellent performance under Windows XP. You just have to make sure to give it a good processor. Windows 98 performance was really out of this world. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of FPS. Doesn't matter if it's Direct 3D or OpenGL, so you can crank up the anti-aliasing, the anisotropic filtering, and you will get a very smooth experience. DOS performance is also excellent at 320 by 200, but at 640 by 480, we saw a little bit of a weakness of this card. Unfortunately, it doesn't support palleted textures as well as table fog, so the NVIDIA FX series of video cards is better in that regard. Having said that, the FX series is weaker under Windows XP, especially with games uh, using the DirectX 9 API. So it's a bit of a trade-off. If you go with the GeForce FX, you are more compatible with the older stuff, with the Windows 98 games. 
but if you choose the uh, ATI Fire GL, you will get much better performance under Windows XP and under Windows 98, most games will run, but you will miss out on palleted textures, which is not that much of a deal. There are not too many games affected, but Table Fog is quite a few games use Table Fog and look quite void without it. So as always, it comes down to pricing and availability. Don't pay a premium for this card. This is a workstation video card. It should be sold for much less than the equivalent Radeon. So basically keep your eyes open. If you come across it for a good price, grab it. It's a very decent video card. If you want to check out more videos about workstation video cards for retro gaming, I will put two videos for you to check out on the screen. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.